What's up everybody, welcome back. In this video I want to show you how to derive the principle of impulse and momentum. So it is uh, an equation that demonstrates that the initial momentum of a system plus an impulse is equal to the final momentum of the system. So we're going to start with Newton's second law. It is the sum of forces is equal to mass times acceleration. This is also called the equation of motion and if you've watched the last two videos you know exactly where I'm going with this but if you've come to this video first no problem I'm gonna go through it again um, so we're gonna write the left hand side the same and on the right hand side we're going to rewrite acceleration as the change in velocity over time dv dt then what we do is we multiply both sides by dt so we have the sum of forces dt is equal to m dv all right we want to integrate both sides so we have our integral sign f dt is equal to integral sign of the right hand side m dv. We want to take this as the definite integral so we'll have from t1 to t2 and from v1 to v2. It is important just to quickly mention that v1 is equal to velocity at t1 and v2 is equal to velocity at t2. All right, so let's leave the left-hand side the same. And if the mass is constant on the right-hand side, we can bring it out of that integral. This is going to be the case for a lot of impact and impulse problems and collisions. Um, the only time really in, at this level that you'll be seeing problems with a non-constant mass would be things like rockets where um, the rocket is burning it's some of its fuel that's on board and the mass of the whole thing is changing but for simple things like car crashes baseballs hitting baseball bats uh, stuff like that the mass will be constant so we can just write that as the integral of dv again we're not going to touch the left hand side and we can really easily evaluate the integral of dv from v1 to v2 it's just going to be mass times v2 minus v1 and we can just distribute the m through those brackets so that's the right hand side is also equal to mv2 minus mv1 and if we just bring the mv1 to the other side we get the principle of impulse and momentum as it's written in blue so we have mv1 plus that integral is equal to mv2 and really what this is saying is mv1 this is the mass times the velocity at time one so mass times velocity is momentum at time one mv2 mass times velocity at time two so this is initial momentum plus the sum of all impulses is equal to the final momentum and that's exactly what the principle of impulse and momentum states momentum one plus impulses is equal to momentum two now we do have the uh, the force inside the integral here and have it outside the integral here um, when you bring it outside the integral, it just means that you've assumed that the force is constant. So what we can do is we can actually work with that. Um, we can take this a little bit further and simplify for the case where mass and force are both constant. So we have mv1 plus the sum of force. This is a really easy integral to do. It's just t2 minus t1 is equal to mv2. And we can rewrite t2 minus t1 as delta t. So we have mv1 plus the sum of f delta t is equal to mv2. So you sometimes will see it written this way as well. It's just a simplification where mass and force are both constant. But again, momentum one plus all the impulses is equal to momentum two of our system.